Hi guys! What's up? How's it going? It's very, very nice to meet you. You are Minashi. We are. Yes, we are. Tell me about this word, Minashi. Tell me what it means. It's a it's a woman's name. It's a feminine name of Indian origin. It means woman oh, with nice. fish like a nice. Yeah. That's excellent. You know, three, Love three it. Three dudes in a band means somebody like that's that's what I've been saying from the onset. <laughs> Help, helps take the edge off. <laughs> I I set up these chats so this is this was the idea right so like 15 minutes you tell me about the wild stuff that's happened in your day just crazy random stuff and then we'll go over the the song you guys sent me sound good I've got a timer all right timer's going 15 minutes what is the craziest thing you've seen the craziest thing. I mean, I've seen. I saw a dead rat on the subway the other day. Whoa. Uh, that's like that's like pretty uh, run of the mill New York stuff, you know. <laughs> maybe I'm a nerd to it. Maybe what? I mean, maybe I'm just a nerd to it. Maybe that is a crazy story, but uh, <laughs> I think I would say prices of oils. If that makes sense. Just looking Wait, at different again? prices of oils. At the supermarket, oh. looking at nine dollars, fifteen dollars, thirty-five dollars for pumpkin seed oil. Thought that was a little crazy. Yeah, the prices in the supermarket are a little nuts. Yeah, we're such crazy inflation. people. <laughs> we're yeah. just wild people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I'm always asking, what's the wildest thing you've seen? Because probably because I live in Portland and there's constantly wild stuff going on. Yeah, what's well, something wild you've seen? Let's see. Oh. Uh, I, I mean, I see wild stuff all the time. Um, it wasn't within the week, but I saw a girl wearing uh, all yellow from head to toe, and she was riding a bike, and she was wearing a construction helmet as her bike helmet, and singing along to the saddest song I've ever heard. Yeah, she was she was singing along to um, to uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the band. Uh, they covered "Fast Car." They're from Portland. Oh, by Tracy Chapman. Yeah, by Tracy Chapman. But the cover is like the most dire thing I've ever heard. Mm. And the song's sad that. anyway, but the cover is wow and she was listening to it on a bike she's looking kind of comical at the same time wearing all yellow but it was, <laughs> it was something really dire yeah it was really it threw me off i was like wow you know what stay crazy portland but yeah like that's that's okay here here's a question here's a good question here's a good one in your whole time in new york city what's what's your craziest transit story Oh, my, there's a lot of those. It's like a lot. Um, all right. Well, crazy for me was like sometimes you get in the subway and there's like some people sleeping on there. You know, that's normal. You know, like we have it here. But one time I went on and it was me and I saw people on it. So I'm like, oh, cool. But it's like a group of six people. Shoes off. It's like they're in a living room, all smoking cigarettes, you know, beers. It was like you just walked into a bar. But like they're just on the subway, and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, like can't breathe. <laughs> and keep in mind, I think this was like late 2020, like pandemic. So they're just like smoking cigarettes Whoa. on the subway, and, and no wow, one's laughing. Them. Them. And that was pretty crazy. I, I don't know, you know, you see that type of thing in a minor way on the train, but like it, it was like a party, <laughs> you know, like. That's so strange. Yeah, legit, like the dogs around the poker table vibe. Oh, wow. And no one stopped them. No. no. They were just, yeah, they were cruising. They were having a great time. Nobody cares on the New York subway. Transit stories. Anybody else got a crazy transit story? Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. The other day I saw a guy just like in the middle of rush hour. Uh, he was... I guess, transporting something from his art studio. Um, but it was like a wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling size canvas. 
It was like the width of like six people and it was taller than him. And, you know, people use a train for that kind of stuff all the time, but it's kind of annoying at like 5 p.m. when you're on your way home from work. It's like, really, dude? This is the day that you chose to do this? Okay. This That's is the time. Awesome. I once that is saw awesome. Couch. I once saw a couch and three people chilling on it. Nice. Yeah. I, a yeah. couch with three people sitting on it on a train? Chilling as if it were their house. Wow. Oh. So this wasn't a week ago, but it was a month, like a couple months ago. And I actually got a recording of it, but a person came on the train without a mask. And like the woman next to him was like, could you please put on a mask? And he was like, no. And then basically in, within the next 10 minutes, the train erupted into this like, get off the train. You know, what are you doing? And he's just like telling people, oh, it's just a, it's just a virus. And, you know, everybody's like yelling at him. They're like. I remember at one point the guy was like, I'm exercising my freedom. And, and some guy replied, why don't you free yourself into an Uber? You know, like, <laughs> which I thought was really funny <laughs> at the time. Oh, uh, that's awesome. But I don't know. So was, awesome. Especially since the pandemic began, I feel like the subway has just been a very, like, like people used to say, like, the city's like this, where you kind of, like, you don't say hi to your neighbor, you kind of just walk by. But the subway is super turned into that. You're kind of just like soup, like in your own personal world or bubble, it feels like these days, super impersonal. Yeah. yeah. How has the pandemic changed New York City? I haven't been since like uh, 2007, but I bet it's changed it dramatically. Um, yeah, more out of dining options, you know? Pleasure. Yeah, less parking. <laughs> less parking. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But... Yeah, they've been blocking off streets in certain neighborhoods, uh, especially on the weekends, and that's been a good thing to come out of the pandemic. They've yeah. been blocking off streets? Yeah, for people to just, like, you know, chill. It's almost like a pedestrian area. You can just sit on the street and have your food and enjoy with your mates. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, a lot of sidewalk dining sort of stuff. Yeah. I will say, I think construct, I remember at the beginning, especially, I think like when everybody was inside, I'm pretty sure they got like a lot of construction and renovation done because like, I remember like, wow, before the pandemic started, we still had a huge abundance of the orange streetlights and now it's like mostly the LED, like wow. I personally noticed that. So I think it's like oh, New York. I don't know. I mean, that's just a theory. I also know that when it started in Shrenik, I used to live with Shrenik, um, there was construction more so outside during that beginning of the pandemic than I've ever heard there. I guess now there might be a little more, but like then it was crazy. It was oh, not wow. stop morning to like uh, sunshine to, uh, or sunrise to sunset. Wow. Yeah. That's that's fascinating. I've been fascinated by the things that cities do differently. Here, we kept saying, you know, they could work on all these streets. We've got potholes in every street since it, no it does nothing but rain here. And there's no construction anywhere. And that it was weird. And we, we thought that was very strange. So I, I'd love to hear that New York City's had some construction happening. Go New York. <laughs> Yeah, it sucks smart. if it's right next to your window. It what? It sucks when it's right next to your window, you know? Oh, that's true. <laughs> when it wants to yeah. sing you the song of its people at 4 a.m. Exactly. Yeah. Or even at 9 a.m. Or oh, 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that well, that was my experience. A 6 a.m. is not good. No, that's not good that, at all. That was no good. I don't know, okay, so tell me about this release. Tell me about this. So you sent me two songs. They're wow. Like the the original song itself. I I listen. I'm like, man, this is great. And the remix is really it's wild. It's um it's very minimalistic. It's uh it's very sound oriented. I, I, I was thrown by it because I was like, wow, this is really, really different. So tell me about it. Who wants to go? Um, well, I mean, uh, 
I guess I'll say how I feel about them as a pair. For me, like the original was this really blissful song. It was like the first half, especially before the distortion kicks in, is really blissful. Like it kind of washes over you, lots of low frequencies, the, you know, with the toms and the bass and like the ambient drones. Um, and so I think like, and then the second half is almost like an opposing force of this harsher middle and higher ends of distortion. And I think the remix is cool because it almost like brings those two together. You have that nice drone that is constant throughout, but a lot of the hectic like attitude of the second half of the song. And so when I hear that, it almost feels like you're getting the moods of both halves at once in this entirely new story, it feels like. And that's kind of what I really like about the the remix and the like how they exist as a pair. I I agree. It's totally a new story. Yeah, it's uh, it's a surprising remix to me. Like because yeah. I listen to it and I'm like, wow, this is really radically different somehow. Yeah, I, I love the drums throughout the song, especially in the first half. How uh, it's almost like a disco song with four on the floor, and the flourishes on the different drums, you know, you hear it getting panned from one ear to another. And I think that's a good takeaway for the first part. And, you know, all credit to Steve for nailing that. That was recorded in one take, by the way. No, no metronome, one take. So that's just all Steve playing it as a live band in one take. Nice. Yeah. And I, and I, I love the, the melody behind it too. Like just as driving as the rhythm is sort of just how melodic it is. Um, and I really enjoy in the remix the way just to kind of like, you know, riff off of what Liam was saying about opposing forces. It's very droney and it's almost ambient in a way, but there are all these moments where the melody sort of, you know, comes up for air and then, you know, buries itself again. Um, and I think it draws a lot of energy from that contrast. And, you know, just to give people an idea, that remix was, was done by Simon Scott from the band Slow Dive. Um, he plays drums in it and it was such a nice opportunity when we reached out to him and he was like yeah sure you know we'll do it and he wow. created three different versions. so you have heard one all three will be out eventually but outside of the context of the band he is a prolific ambient artist um, and that was the in intention and the motivation to just reach out to him and see if it works out and you know glad it did I could when I was looking at who did the remix and looking at the remix, I was like, this reminds me so much of the work on Pygmalion, on Slow Dive's Pygmalion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like in a track, like, yeah, like in Crazy For You, where it is just droning throughout, but you get the vocals peeking in and out. I can see that. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting to, to hear. You don't always hear... Um, Simon Scott projects. I mean, you you hear um, you hear Rachel Goswell projects, and you hear um, a lot of um, Christian Seville projects, and um, but you don't hear from Simon Scott that often. And I think that's really yeah. neat. I feel like he's very underrated because he has so many albums out. Um, some of the sounds in the remix, I think that remind me of his album, Below Sea Level, which was his latest release, where he combines field recordings with the water with modular synthesizers. And he has such a nice sort of idea of composition and how he builds and builds and builds. It's almost like a journey rather than having a set structure. I love it. And I, I love the oceanic feeling on that song, that it has that to begin with. And I think the remix really shows that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys so much for, for talking to me today. And I'm very happy that, um, that you sent me this music that, that I get to listen to and love. It's very awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Have Thank a you. great day. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Bye.